Hi everybody, uh, welcome to my channel and today I have actually brought you out to my trees which are growing out in the ground in an area called Grabo. It's in the Western Cape of South Africa and I've been field growing these trees. It's a mix of uh, Celtus as well as Aces and a couple of other bits and pieces in between but I've been field growing them for a number of years. Uh, you would have uh, perhaps watched some of my other videos dealing with field growing but today I'm going to be dealing with a very specific aspect of uh, field growing and that is uh, going to be working with a power tool which I've recently purchased, uh, purchased to try out uh, on scars and uh, dealing with scars uh, in an effort to get them to heal over as best as possible while the tree is still in the field. I'm sure that you'll know that when you've taken a tree and put it into a bonsai container or any kind of container the growth of that tree dramatically slows down down. So if you have any uh, thickening of branches or trunk, um, and in this case uh, the subject of today uh, being scars, if you have any of that to heal over it's best to do it while the tree is still full of energy and in the ground. Let's take a look at this example of a Chinese maple that has been field grown for a number of years and uh, just to give you a little bit of a um, history on it, uh, probably about two months ago we came and cut off these large branches that were used to help thicken the trunk uh, to create taper and to create some movement. So those branches were then cut off in uh, very late spring, early summer. The reason for that is, uh, or the time, the reason for the timing is that you want the tree to have as much strength as possible and then to cut off those, uh, the, the large growth, the branches, and uh, when you do that the tree will burst new buds all over the tree. Now unfortunately uh, we had a heat wave uh, fairly recently and it's a lot of those new leaves have been a little bit burnt but I have every confidence that the tree will recover from that and continue to grow. But that brings you up to today where uh, I want to show you or refer to some of these scars that were created when we sawed off um, those, those branches. And um, at the moment they're very flat. This creates a bit of a challenge or a problem uh, when callus is expected to form over it. You need to bear in mind what the finished product is going to look like. So you need to think about how the callus is going to roll and form over these scars and whether that's going to be presentable uh, for, for the tree, particularly obviously when it's without leaves. And if you're showing it one day without leaves, you want to make sure that that scarring looks good. Uh, so a flat surface is not, uh, not ideal. So one of the things that I'd like to show you today is how uh, to deal with that. This surface, if, if it was left just as is, the callus is going to form over it and it's going to form even more of a mound over here. So this needs to be hollowed out. Uh, given a, a little bit of a convex surface otherwise it's not going to be pleasing in the long term. So this is another surface that it's been slightly shaped uh, when it was sawn um, when this section was sawn off but it's still very flat and there's a few um, uh, the surface isn't it hasn't been finished off really nicely so I'd like to carve this and just give it make it a little bit more uh, more pleasing. So as I've just mentioned, you need to treat the cut or the wound uh, to some extent uh, and to facilitate, or well, the idea would be to facilitate the callus rolling over and forming on, on that scar. So a flat surface, especially a large flat surface, is not ideal. Uh, it'll give you a rather artificial uh, finish. Uh, I have seen trees with a convex sort of finish of callus, which can be quite interesting, uh, especially if you use that as a means to uh, give the trunk a thicker appearance. So if you're actually adding to the girth of, of the trunk. But usually what is done is the 
the surface is given a concave uh, finish so in other words some material is carved out of it so it has a cupped like appearance and of course one of the ways uh, that you can achieve that is with a carving chisel like a gouge so you can actually gouge out material and I'll show that to you in a moment but that is the one uh, that is the probably a tradition a more traditional method um, of doing it uh, one of the problems with it is that depending on how big the scar is obviously with the hitting uh, if you're going to be doing it by hand that's fine but sometimes depending on the species the wood might be too hard uh, for you to carve by hand you you may need to use a mallet in this case I'm using a rubber mallet um, and uh, but but every time you hit the chisel uh, on the tree there is a vibration a vibration in the tree so depending on how long the tree has been in the ground it could obviously unsettle it um, but that's just uh, it may, with I don't know how how important it is uh, you will obviously feel the tree moving uh, but perhaps it has um, perhaps there's no no real uh, negative side effect to doing that the next method that you could consider using is a cordless die grinder because obviously we're out in the on a farm so there's no electrical points that you can have access to and a carving bit and in this case I'm going to be using the six millimeter nibbler bit um, this is something new that I've just purchased I've never tried it um, I've always wanted to to see whether that um, this this tool would uh, be an asset to me and uh, just in playing with it a uh, little bit before doing this video I'm, I'm really loving it so it's not something that I sell uh, the the tool but I'm sure that you can buy it at most hardware stores so it's the it's the Makita uh, cordless die grinder I do use the corded die grinder quite extensively at home for doing carving and uh, so I was pretty certain that this would be an asset to me in the field and um, of course you get a range of different uh, bits carving bits for for bonsai and for other applications um, I sell the the nibbler uh, the six millimeter one and it's great fits perfectly in the die grinder very easy uh, and it takes just it takes off just the right amount of, uh, of material and uh, for me most importantly I don't feel unsafe when I'm using it and uh, so I'm going to uh, demonstrate to you what what kind of effect uh, what kind of carving um, work can be done uh, with this uh, this combination so to use the nibbler uh, the six millimeter nibbler we're simply just going to slot it into the collet that comes with the tool and this is this is completely standard and uh, then using the wrenches the spanners that uh, come supplied just give it a little bit of a tighten and that's it it's ready to to be used so we're first going to use the chisel I want to demonstrate using a chisel and what you're looking at doing is just bringing these sharp edges any sharp edges you want to make them rounded so you're removing small amounts of material at a time and be too aggressive and you just chisel away at it until you've got a slightly shaped uh, surface so you just don't want large flat areas you don't want to curve this or shape this too much uh, it, 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 it does you need to compensate for the callus which is going to roll over and I'm, I think it's best if I show you an example of callus that is rolling so you can get a better idea um, but you need to be careful of the shaping you also don't want to get too thin uh, because it's not going to put on depending on how much growth you have later on um, in in terms of the, the rest of the tree the trunk line that develops afterwards uh, but if you're close to wanting to lift the tree out of the ground this area is not going to thicken up too much so you don't want to make it too thin that it looks a bit like a pancake from the side obviously that would be an extreme scenario but you need to be aware of that and you need to allow for sufficient material at this point um, it, to make it believable once the callus has formed now obviously it is to some extent species dependent there is a vast difference in the callus formation on a celtus versus the callus formation on an acer or particularly um, a trident maple or Chinese maple the one is much thicker the latter is much thicker than the first 
you may notice that when I'm hitting with the, the mallet that the tree is, is definitely moving. As I said earlier on, I don't know how much of a problem that really is. Um, this tree has been growing in the ground for a number of years, so it's probably not going to disturb it. But if your tree has recently been planted in the ground, I would certainly suggest that you um, either wait for a season or two before you do this, or that you use uh, a power tool that's going to have that's going to be far less, um, uh, and the word is not intrusive, but it'll be far less um, invasive. <laughs> um, but I think you know what I mean. So now I'm going to be trying the, the bit with the die grinder. And what you'll see is that far smaller amounts of material are removed at a time, um, the, the wood shavings but it's very controllable and uh, because the effort is well it's effortless really because the machine is doing all the work for you you can really uh, be very gentle with it or take off very little material at a time so it allows you to shape uh, the cut very sensitively What you can see is that uh, within a couple of minutes, uh, with as I say, very little effort at all, uh, and a very and in a very controlled manner, I was able to give this uh, previously very flat angular surface just a little bit more interest, a little bit more detail. Now, bearing in mind, this is laying the foundation for callus formation. So this is not dead wood work. Um, so it doesn't matter when you're working across the grain or with the grain. What you're trying to do is just get an, a surface onto which the um, the callus can form. So what I really like about, uh, as I said, this is the first time I actually use this machine and this bit um, out in the field. But when you've got 20, 30 trees or, or however many trees you've got and you're working on, um, you're having to do this kind of work on multiple trees, having a machine like this and a bit like this really does make life a lot easier. Uh, if this was done all by hand, um, I definitely wouldn't be able to get through the number of trees that I need to in a day. And now once you've finished shaping the surface, you need to make sure that you seal uh, the surface with a sealer. And this is to prevent it from drying out, uh, particularly the, the edges where you've got green cambium. You'll see that at the edges of the wound. Uh, you need to seal that very well. I'm using top gin sealer and a paintbrush just to apply it. It's so much easier to do it this way. And, um, but I will also seal the, the wood as well so that there's no chance that that can start to, to rot. Now, as the sealer is water-based, to clean your brush, just have some water handy and then you can rinse the brush off and you can use it on the next tree again. This cut was made, I believe it was about uh, a, a year ago, and you can see how the callus is starting to form. So depending on when the cut is made, as I mentioned earlier on in this, um, in this video, that these cuts, I make these cuts in late spring, early, Jan uh, early summer. The reason for that is so that I can get the maximum amount of uh, new shoots back budding on the tree. But at that time, the sap flow is not as aggressive as it is in spring. So it also means that the callus formation is not going to be as aggressive as it would be in spring. But it also, um, with some trees, particularly the trident, you will have a lot of uh, loss of sap, a lot of bleeding if you do the cut in very very early spring. So I find uh, late spring, early summer is the best time. Here is an example of a cut that is now completely healed over. Um, this was quite a major uh, cut scar. I think it was a trunk chop um, that, that I did a number of years ago and uh, but now you can see it's completely healed over so there's uh, pretty much no evidence that it ever existed. 
This is a much older scar that is largely healed over, but there is still this cavity here. Um, now this kind of callus, this thick callusing, that you'll find that on trees that, this is obviously still in the ground and there was quite a lot of growth um, that, that, that developed uh, along with this trunk. And so that's given rise to this very thick callus. Uh, now when you cut the trunk off, then you're gonna find that the callus is gonna, uh, the callus formation is gonna be a lot slower. And uh, so then I, I've come up with a different uh, method of treating this and that is to fill this cavity uh, with cement and uh, then the callus only has to form a thin layer over the cement in order for it to totally hide this old scar. I'm going to demonstrate to you now how to deal with uh, scars that have started to heal where the callus tissues form quite thickly and uh, there's a cavity that remains uh, and just to accelerate the callus to cover that area we're going to fill it with cement and uh, what I'm going to be using is this product rock set uh, it's it's made by polycell this is a South African brand uh, whatever you can get in wherever you live um, so long as it's a fast anchoring cement so it's something that uh, it, it rapidly dries you can use traditional uh, cement and uh, cement sand mix if you want. Uh, I like using this for small small areas because it does dry very quickly and you can you can sort of shape it as well which is quite nice and it gives you a very a smooth finish. Um, so this is a water-based product so you just need some water and a, a container to mix it in and then we can you can apply it to to, to the tree. Okay so just once again this is an old cut uh, a chunk, uh, sorry, a trunk chop that was made a number of years ago and due to the amount of callus uh, flow, uh, I'm sorry, not the callus flow, the sap flow, uh, this callus is formed very thickly. So it's caused uh, like a depression inside here. So rather than wait, uh, because I've done another trunk chop higher up on this tree, it's more than likely that this uh, the sap flow will not be as aggressive as it was before. And so it's gonna have t trouble with uh, healing this last little bit of, of the scar. So to make it easier, I'm going to fill this with cement and uh, or rock set. And um, uh, so what you need to look out for is that this, uh, the base inside here, the old wood here, uh, if it's rotting, you need to carve that out. Uh, but this, is, this, this wood is still sound. So we can fill, we can put the rock set directly on top of that. And then you wanna fill it up to more or less this level um, so that the callus can then just easily slide or grow over it. Make sure that when you mix the paste up that it's not too watery uh, because otherwise it's gonna run a lot. This is, this is borderline. Um, it will do this a little bit, you can, put something across like a tape or something as a retainer uh, but it'll start setting within a few minutes and then we can just shape it a little bit better but that's 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 all that we need to put in there um, now I'm just wait for it to start to solidify one of the things that I like about the fast anchoring cement is that unlike traditional cement it dries so much faster and so you're able to within sort of 15 minutes of mixing it and uh, applying it you're able to shape it um, give you a really nice smooth finish and it starts it's it's pretty much dry at, at this point it's just probably another five ten minutes and then we can do or perform the next the next step once the fast anchoring cement or whatever that you've used to fill has dried you can then use a grafting knife or an empty cutter some sharp blade to score the edge and what this is going to do is activate this callus formation or activate the cambium where you want the callus to form and then once you've exposed the cam cambium you then seal the whole area. Sealing it ensures that the cambium remains moist 
if it dries out it stops to stops forming so if you keep it moist with a sealer then it will continue developing but this is something that you may do you may repeat this step at least the cutting the edge just exposing the the cambium because every time you do that it, it sort of um, catalyzes the process it's not necessary to seal the the cement um, but if you want to you can and that's that's all there is to it so this will now heal a lot faster this is probably taken the ground maybe two years and this will be covered over with callus that's all for today um, I just want to recap we I showed you how you can deal with uh, scars while trees are in the ground just uh, as a way to help you to get them to callus over quicker and we looked at uh, two scenarios one where we used a um, very manual method of uh, carving chisels and then we looked at using a power tool a cordless power tool in this case and then also showed you how to deal with a scar that has um, that has started healing is a few years into into healing in fact and uh, where a large or that the callus is very thick and um, then what to do with uh, with in, a, in an instance like that so i hope that you've uh, benefited from uh, from today from the information that i shared with you uh, as always please feel free to ask your comments uh, below or make comments below and i'll i'll uh, certainly do my best to answer your questions as soon as possible and if you haven't done so already Ready. I uh, hope that you will uh, subscribe and like my channel and uh, better yet to share it with your friends, uh, bonsai clubs or whoever else you think might be interested in what I have, uh, what I've shared with you today. But thanks very much and until next time, goodbye.